All right, Colts fans, we are back with another film session interview. We're joined today by Colts middle linebacker Anthony Walker. Uh, one of the, uh, you know, two, you know, one of the, I guess the second part of the best, you know, duo in, in the league, I guess, you and you and Darius Leonard. I mean, you guys are, you guys have been kind of inseparable the last uh, couple of years here um, with this uh, linebacker group. And you guys have, again, just really formed one of the better two duos in the league. Um, you know, what's kind of been the key to your guys' success, not only individually, but also together? And you guys have just been playing so well these last two years. Yeah, I think um, the off the field bond that we created, um, you know, which also, you know, always makes the, the game play on the field a lot better. So, um, you know, just our friendship off the field, number one. And then number two, um, you know, just our communication, our our hold each other accountable aspect of it. Our mindset is that, um, you know, we have to lead the defense. And uh, um, that's all. We try to go out there and do that every week. Yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, I, I saw something that he mentioned the other day during an interview that you beat him in tackles last year. Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. kind of how you got, do you guys kind of compete like that with, with little things like stats and stuff like that? Yeah, but stats is just probably the minor part of it. Um, we compete pretty much everything, waking up first to get a workout in or whatever it is. Um, you know, we know that we understand that we have to push each other in order to, you know, have that number one linebacker dual spot. So, um, yeah, we never, we never, we never want to feel like we're letting each other, you know, take a break or, you know, whatever it is, we want to push each other to the highest limit. And uh, we try to do that every day. Yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, talking about your, your individual success here, you know, I, I feel like, you know, it just kind of happened when Darius kind of stepped in in 2018, but uh, your game really took that big step from 2017 to 2018. And then even more so from 2018 to this last year, um, what's kind of been the key for you personally, just getting better every single year here in the NFL? Yeah, um, I think uh, that's the number one thing I try to work on. You know, each day I want to get better. Each uh, each year I want to take another step. Um, and uh, the complacency, I never want to get complacent and feel like I've, you know, done something. I haven't done anything yet. I have a long way to go. And I just hold myself to that standard to, you know, continuously get better, continuously work on my game. Um, you know, last year I was able to take another positive step forward, but, you know, I, I still think I have a, a lot more, you know, to, to, you know, put on display and uh, to help my team be able to win, win more games next year. So um, I think that mindset of always, you know, trying to get better. Um, obviously, you know, I have great players around me. Darius Leonard, like you said, uh, great D-line. Um, secondary, Kenny Moore outside, you know, I have great people around me. So um, they actually, you know, they make me look, you know, look great at times as well. So, um, you know, yeah, I just want to uh, – we, we continue to put this mindset of, you know, we want to be an elite defense, and that doesn't happen overnight. So, um, you know, we're still working towards that, and that's our goal every day. Yeah, for sure. And and I want to talk about one player that was added last year who, you know, was kind of a big surprise when he was when he was drafted in the third round and Bobby Okariki. Mm -hmm. um, and he was a big addition for you guys in that linebacker group. And honestly, I think when all three of you guys were on the field, it was uh, just a really big positive every time that all three of you guys were out there. Um, what did you kind of see from him uh, kind of his rookie year um, as he kind of joined uh, you and Darius there in that linebacker group? No, Darius. Uh, no, Darius. Uh, Bobby <laughs> Speth. And um, obviously that uh, Stanford, you know, Northwestern connection, um, you know. So we always compete you know, when it comes to that. But. No, he's a special player, um, athletic, uh, very fast, physical and everything like that. Definitely has all the tools to be, you know, the bet, one of the best, uh, you know, play the position. So, um, you know, he's, he, like you said, a great addition to, um, you know, to the linebacker, to the linebacking core. Um, you know, his, his, his smarts on the field and, you know, his physicality that he brings, um, you know, definitely stepping over, stepping in to play that mic position mm -hmm. when uh, Darius was hurt when I moved over to Will. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, he's again, he's smart. He can play all three positions on the field, um, you know, physical enough to play all three positions and also athletic enough to play all three positions. So uh, definitely a big addition for us. And, uh, you know, really, really interested to see uh, him take that next step, you know, going from one, year one to year two. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, speaking of big additions, you know, that was the 2018 big addition. 2019, though, you guys got a huge addition in, in DeForest Buckner uh, trading that first round pick for him. And, um, definitely well worth it. I mean, I, I turn on that guy's film and, and he's just in the backfield every single play. Um, as, as a linebacker, though, when you when you kind of watch a guy like that and you see a guy like him uh, kind of in front of you, just how much does that kind of help your game and help kind of what you want to do as a linebacker? Yeah, he's disruptive. And, you know, for us as linebackers, we want to be able to run and hit the ball. So 
um, him causing disruption or getting two guys to block him instead of one or, you know, whatever it is, um, you know, he's going to demand that double team every time. And he's going to win most of those battles anyway. But uh, that extra second that the offensive lineman can't get up to, you know, the linebackers is going to be key. And uh, he's done that year in, year out, um, you know, since he's been in the league, you know, been one of the best, if not the best, uh, three technique in the game. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And that's definitely going to help so much uh, going into this next year. But uh, jumping to your film here, uh, the first thing I want to say before we even start this clip here is I think the, the biggest thing in your game, especially in the run game, is just your instincts and your ability to kind of read a play before it even happens. Um, that's something that's been evident since, you know, you were in college with at Northwestern and, and something that really persisted here this last year. And, and something I really love about this play here as we play it, um, you're just able to really quickly read this play and get into the backfield and beat that tight end to the spot. Um, and I, I'm curious on this play, did you know it was a run before they even snapped the ball on this play from, from film study and, and just seeing their formation? Yeah, you see the formation. You see you got two tight ends. Uh, you know, both of the tight ends are kind of in blocking stances and positions. If, you know, we all know Hooper, if he if he's going out in the route, he's not looking like that. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, my read is one step. So if the back takes one step to me and the tight end blocks down one step, I'm gone. Okay. So we've seen Darius do this, do this a number of times uh, to read that one step and just go. And uh, like, and that angle has to change because the, obviously you see the line is changing. So my angle starts, you know, it's supposed to be in between the, you know, number one, the the first tight end and the second tight end. But obviously that changes. So my my angle has to change, mm-hmm. and uh, I get inside, and um, I was able to beat him and uh, get to the get to the running back on that play. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, as a linebacker, how do you, how do you focus? Or I guess how do you work on like tackling, for instance, in practice? You know, because. Um, you know, here your angle gets kind of changed when, when he gets a little bit of contact on, the, on you, the running back's jumping outside, and you have to make a pretty difficult tackle. How do you kind of practice plays like this and rep plays like this so it's it's good on game days? Yeah, um, you know, you want to be as uh, ta- tackle fundamentally, fundamentally sound um, as you can. And uh, like you said, in practice, you don't want to take guys to the ground or anything like that. So we work on, uh, you know, grabbing the hamstrings and running three hard steps. And our coach always says, if your head is behind, which my head is behind on this one, Mm -hmm. when I'm making the tackle, to roll back. So that's what I literally try to do, grab him and then roll back and bring him with me. And uh, that's that's how I was able to make that tackle. But like you said, um, you know, when you're in practice, you don't want to take guys to the ground. So it's kind of of hard to work on live tackling. So uh, hitting, like we do, we do bag tackle drills every day. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just working on running your feet and everything like that. And, uh, again, I mean, we're professionals now. We've been tackling, you know, I want to say yeah. um, 20, or 20 years now. So, uh, just, uh, like, it kind of becomes, you know, second nature. Yeah, for sure. And then talking about that pra- practice element, you know, I've, I've talked with uh, numerous guys. You know, I've talked to Kamoka Turi, Ben Bonagu, but you're, you're kind of the first linebacker I've talked to. So, I'm curious. Um, I, I've talked to all these guys, and they've always said the practice is so big for the Colts, you know, from, from what you guys are going to do on Sundays to who's going to play more on Sundays. Uh, the practice element is huge for you guys. Um, but kind of how big is it for you guys as linebackers? You know, how, how big is it to practice well throughout the week from your kind of your reads and from your, um, you know, playing well in practice? What, what kind of goes into the Sunday portion of it uh, with practice? Yeah, Coach Eberflus talks about it all the time, man. If you, you, you practice how – you play how you're going to pra- – you practice how you're going to play. So, um, you know, you, know, you want to have a good – three days of practice before you step out on the field Sunday. And that's, like you said, that's your reads, your reaction, you know, how you run to the ball, everything like that. Um, if the, the more, the better you practice, the better you feel on game day. The game should be easy for you. So we practice, um, you know, I say probably we have one of the hardest, hardest practices in the league. Yeah. Um, you know, just our tempo, you know, the, 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 the hustle that we run with on the field um, in practice. Um, when it's game time, you know, you you really feel like the game is slowed down. You know, everything it takes its time and everything like that. We practice so fast and so hard that the game is pretty much easy to us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and that's definitely what I've heard from from players who have been with other teams and players who were kind of drafted to this team as well. It's just you guys go hard all the time in practice, and that kind of determines who plays on Sundays and what plays you guys are going to run on Sundays. Does, does defense go that way as well? Uh, yeah. Like so, what, what plays? Um, yeah, of course, want to make sure that everybody's, you know, locked in on the game plan. And if anything's, you know, too complicated or anything like that, he throws it out. Um, you know, we want to be simple as possible. We want guys to go out there, fly around and execute. 
And, um, you know, that's the best way to do that is to have a limited menu. And we make sure that we go in every Sunday with a limited menu and guys just go out there and execute. Gotcha. Gotcha. So going to this next clip here, uh, going against the Steelers and let me move this screen over. Um, again, just another play where I feel like you're, you're just able to read it so quickly and you're able to um, get in the backfield before the offense is even expecting it here. I mean, what, again, what kind of gives this play away here as a screen play coming your way? Yeah, so we're actually in cover two here. Um, the first time they ran it, we were in cover one. And I had the back, uh, kind of the same thing, the cross screen. I think it was the third play of the game. Uh, we were in man. And uh, did me and Darius talk before the play that if he steps across that I have to take him. And uh, kind of got jumbled up a little bit in the crowd. And I ended up getting picked. And uh, that play went for about 30 yards or 20 yards that first play. So um, they kind of ran the same motion and everything like that. I knew it was the red zone. I think this is a second down play right here. Yeah. Second and 12 or second and eight or something like that. And, uh, you know, that's a huge screen down for most teams, especially in the red zone. You know, the, the field kind of gets smaller. So it's kind of hard to take those shots or anything like that. So when I seen the the, mo the same motion with that drag route coming, I seen the back step across and I just went. Um, yeah, it was just a great read, great play, and, uh, you know, huge play for our defense. Yeah, so you, you talk about that communication there with Darius. I mean, especially after the first play where – they were able to get that big gain on you. I mean, is that just something that's constantly going on throughout the entire game? You and Darius talking about, you know, what's I mean, going on in front of you? Hey, right after the play, that, right after that that play, I told him that was my fault because, you know, I got caught up in the traffic. And, uh, you know, so we wanted to make sure that if that did, that play did happen again, you know, it was covered the next time. This one, we were actually in the zone coverage. And, uh, you know, we were able to have all, all, all eyes on the ball. And, uh, you know, guys were able to read and react faster. Yeah. And, you know, kind of speaking of that zone coverage, when, when uh, Coach Eberflus came over and he brought over all his staff and stuff, you guys really switched to a very zone heavy scheme. Um, mm -hmm. And that's something that you guys have, have done these last two years. Um, was that how different was that kind of from your rookie year? I mean, did your rookie year, was it a lot of zone as well? Or was that kind of um, a different scheme? Yeah, I didn't really play much rookie year, so I wasn't really involved in the game plan as much. Um, I think we did run a little bit more man, though. Um, okay. But I was mostly a special teams guy. So, but yeah. when I, I kind of, I was used to playing, you know, cover four, cover three, cover two from college. So, you know, for me, that was the same thing when uh, Coach Eva Flustam came in. Yeah. Is that kind of more of an, I guess, a spot of kind of comfort for a linebacker being in that zone where you can kind of read everything in front of you? Um, yeah. You realize on the quarterback, you know, you know, when you're playing, when you play a lot of man, you know, with these, the way the quarterbacks are built today, you think about Lamar Jackson and all, uh, you know, all the mobile quarterbacks. Um, if you if you have all the guy all eyes facing away from the quarterback, then it's easy for them to you know run around or whatever it is. You know you have zone coverage, you have all guys with eyes on the quarterback. You know you can set up and break a little bit faster, mm -hmm. and uh, that creates turn turnovers. You know you take away the big play and everything like that. So that's you know when you when it's done well, when zone coverage is done well, you know every every play should be you know less than five yards, and mm -hmm. you know you switch it up on third down or whatever it is. But, you know, if you execute it the right way, it could be very effective. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, we always hear with, with offenses and even defense too, that there's kind of what you're trying to accomplish each game. You know, offenses are trying to get those explosive plays. Uh, but with your guys' zone defense, is what you guys trying to accomplish, you know, keeping plays in front of you, making tackles, and then also kind of forcing turnovers from that? Definitely. You know, you, we were able to get the ball thrown to exactly where we want the ball thrown at. The no cover zone is what our coach calls it. And uh, that you, know, you set up a break, it creates big hits, it creates takeaways. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, like you said, the offenses want to get down the field as fast as possible. You know, you have to go 12 plays, 13 plays, something like, you know, you just have to execute so much and everything like that, you know, to get down there. You know, some, we feel that we can now execute a team that goes 13 plays down the field, you know. Yeah. We know when they get to the red zone, we're still going to execute. You know, and they're taking their time getting down there. We know we can still execute our game plan. So um, it's fun for us. You know, when we get those long drives or a team tries to outlast us, you know, we feel that we, we, we can outlast any team on the field. Yeah, for sure. And that's definitely a big aspect of this defense that we've seen the last two years. And um, it, it's, it's kind of interesting because, you know, we're in a really weird time with, with football where people are getting analytics in there and they're getting – advanced stats and stuff and and you know catches allowed and stuff like that is a negative thing but you know with this defense it doesn't I mean you obviously don't want them to catch every single pass but yep. if they catch a pass for two three yards that's still a win for your guys defense right definitely that's a win you know with first and ten they get two three yards it's second and seven second and eight 
If, um, you know, so now we they're playing on our terms. You know, they get the second and three, second and two. Now they can take a shot. They can run the ball, whatever it is. They have they control the game. So we want to be able to control the game, and that's how we were able to do that. Gotcha, gotcha. And that was kind of big where you guys were able to step up in the red zone a lot last year, especially mm-hmm. early last season. You know, teams could drive on you guys, but the big aspect was stepping up in that red zone and force them to field goals or turnovers from that spot. For sure. Awesome. And then getting this next play, we're going to talk a little about coverage here. And, again, it's kind of that, that zone defense. And mm-hmm. the most interesting thing with me when it comes to zone, because, you know, linebacker is always a tough position for me to, to evaluate because it's kind of like the quarterback on defense. You know, it, you have to study so much yep. to, to know what the linebacker is doing. You know, kind of like a quarterback where a quarterback, to see if they're really doing the play correctly, you have to watch the receivers, you have to watch the line, you have to watch them, you have to watch – you know, you have to watch everything. Yeah. But linebacker is kind of the same way. You yeah. know, you kind of have to see – every single aspect of the defense to understand what they're trying to do. Um, so something that I like to, to always ask linebackers when I talk to them is, you know, how, how far do you know how to get your depth, I guess, in zone? You know, like here, for instance, you know, you get a couple steps back. Um, are you keying in on this guy here is it in this zone or is it kind of you're trying to get to your spot and you see this guy breaking and you're kind of reacting? Yeah, so, um, you know, you – the I mean, land we have landmarks as linebackers. We want to get 10 to 12 and all that stuff or a deep middle run that you want to get, you know, how deep they take you, whatever it is. But, um, you know, sometimes you have to be a football player. We talk about the three-step drop. You know, he catches the ball. He doesn't even – the quarterback doesn't even take a step back. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I don't want to get too much depth for no reason. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a, a common play, you know, sticks route. They just try to get three on the out route right now. Although I'm in zone, I need to be breaking on that play, you know, before he gets to the nickel. And uh, it should be a bang, 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 bang play between me and the nickel. We should make that play. So, um, you know, here I'm reading three-step. I'm trying to get to, the, to get to my man. We're in cover three here. I'm trying to get to, my, get to my landmark and to the, you know, to my guy. I don't really have a guy on this one. I have a landmark to get to. Um, it's three-step, though, so I'm able to set up and break faster and, uh, you know, be able to knock that ball away. Awesome. And, and was that ever something that was kind of, I guess, tough for you? Um, you know, even if, if it was the high school or college level where understanding like, hey, I have to get to my landmark, but I can't be covering air. You know, I have to be on a guy as well. So is that kind of a tough balance to find as a, as a yeah, defender? Yeah, I mean, you want to be, you know, you, you don't want the ball to get thrown up behind you or anything like that. But as, as you grow in the football game and everything like that, you kind of start to feel the game a little bit more. So this here, you know, I'm looking, I'm reading this from, you know, way before that the players even snapped. I'm looking at it was a sudden change. You know, this I think we – I don't know if we turned the ball over or something like that. I know this was a sudden change down, and uh, this was the first play. Mm-hmm. The first – and they, you know, just try to get the quarterback a comfortable throw right here. And uh, so I'm ready to break early. You know, we, we look at the set. You know, three is extended. The ball has to come out. The back is leaving right now, so the ball has to come out fast. You know, so little things like that I kind of try – I start to pick up on. I've gotten – you know, much more mature in my game since high school. So, yeah. um, you know, just being able to read the little things like that and then just go and feel the play happen as it happens. And, uh, you know, this is what I talked about. You know, when you set up and break, you got eyes on the quarterback. Um, you know, it creates a turnover, a big hit. And here we were able to get a PBU, possible, you know, interception or whatever could have happened off that play. Yeah, for sure. And I think you had an interception on this type of play against the Eagles, I think, in 2018. Yeah. Same mm-hmm. exact type of play. Um, exactly. But, yeah, I mean, this kind of stuff is just so interesting to me when it talk when it kind of comes down to how much you guys have to, you know, read as a linebacker. Yeah, um, yeah. So I'm reading the quarterback here, reading the running back, yeah. offensive line pass set. Then, you know, you read – then you kind of just feel the receiver, as our coach says. You want to feel the receiver, see the quarterback. Yeah. And, I, you know, you're, I think you're like the third or fourth linebacker I've talked to in this kind of style of interview. You're the first NFL guy I've talked to. But um, mm-hmm. what's so interesting to me about linebackers, and we kind of talk about the other play too, is – how you kind of have to know the play that's coming just before it even happens, you know, like from reading formation, reading, you know, what you said, like it was a quick change. They were trying to get that quick throw with the quarterback there. You know, how, how often would you say that, you know, maybe not, you know, the exact play coming, but you know, before plays even happening, you kind of have a feel for what's going on. You say that's like that on most plays for you. Yeah. Um, you know, again, I, we're, nobody's perfect. So I'm not going to be a hundred percent right, but I can tell, you know, I, I try to, you know, study enough and understand the game enough to, you know, I know it's second and 12 after an unsuccessful run, you know, screen alert, draw alert, you know, so maybe, you know, try to get some of the yards back a little quick throw, whatever it is, you know, you want to try to feel, you know, that's why you watch so much game tape to see, you know, how teams react after, if they're put in this position or, you know, what are their calls on this down and distance and stuff like that. So 
you know, we're ready to go when, when it's happening. We're not, you know, trying to guess. You're trying to, you know, you pretty much have the answers to the test. You just want to execute, want to execute the answers. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way to put it for sure there. And, um, you know, yeah, it, it's just so interesting to me. Like, again, just, just watching this kind of stuff. Did, did you feel like, you know, from even from your rookie year to your sophomore yeah. junior, that it's just gotten better each year with you? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think uh, I've always been a knowledgeable guy of the game. I think I think my knowledge has gone up, you know, year each year, honestly. Um, you know, just the the my mindset approach of the game and everything like that. Uh, you know, I'm I'm able to understand coverages a lot more. Um, you know, run fits and everything like that. You know, you just start to get it a little more and uh, you know, I I don't take that for granted. Yeah, for sure. And then getting to this next clip here, this was a huge play. Um, you know, you you guys unfortunately came short in this game, but this was a big yeah. Big game here, and, uh, you know, you were able to make a play. I think this was the first offensive snap of the game. You were able to force, mm-hmm. the, turnover, first turn, force the turnover here. Um, yeah. And, we you know, we kind of touched on it, um, I think, on, like, the Steelers clip. But um, how big is the emphasis on forcing turnovers for this defense in particular? Yeah, well, we want to we create a short field for our offense, and we want to be able to, you know, keep their, keep their offense from getting – to, to making, from making big plays. And to do that, you keep the ball away from them. So um, here, you know, we were – this is, the like you said, the first offensive snap. We both – we actually got bad bad steps and bad reads pretty much by yeah. everybody. Um, you know, I almost, you know, kind of went underneath that blocker there, but I knew I couldn't, you know, because I would have created – that would have created a, a huge scene. Mm-hmm. So I kind of fought, fought my way over and uh, was able to, you know, kind of meet him, you know, to where I, we could limit the game gain. And then I seen he was going for the stiff arm. You know, we work on that all the time. You know, the guy stiff arms, you knock the stiff arm down, and then you wrap and punch. And I was able to do that on that play. Malik happened to be right there. Great play by him. Um, you know, our ball hawk, you know. So we were, you know, able to create a, a big play early on in this game. You know, kind of gave us a lot of momentum. Then uh, Bobby comes back with a huge play, mm-hmm. even more momentum. So, again, the turnovers, you know, we thought would spring us in this game. You know, we had, you know, some great plays. You know, by you know, by two by two the two linebackers, me and Bobby, uh, some great explosive turnovers and uh, setting our offense up with a short field. But as again, you know, this is a long the game is long, man. You have to keep playing. Uh, you know, we felt that we let this one get away. Obviously, uh, kind of, yeah. you know, definitely hurts. But um, again, I think that that the, those two plays were definitely positive. This one and then Bobby punching the ball away from Tannehill on the next play. So, um, yeah, like you talk about momentum creation. Um, you know, being able to keep their offense off the field, um, whatever it is, you know, turnovers, you know, are, you know, when you create turnovers, you spark life into the stadium, into the team and everything like that. So um, that's why our emphasis on, on turnovers are so huge and big for us as a team. It's kind of how the NFL game has gone too lately. For sure. Offenses are so explosive. You know, like you guys yeah. said, you guys play a lot of zone to kind of keep offenses less explosive, but – you know, it, it does seem like there's sometimes in, in these games nowadays where you're not going to be able to stop an offense every single play. So you have to, you know, force those turnovers and help your offense get back on the field. And, and Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, like you said, offenses are so explosive now. You know, you have <laughs> pretty much a- a- athletes at every position, offensive line, we're running yeah. back, tight ends running four threes now. So yeah. you want to be able to, again, like you said, um, you know, create those turnovers and give your offense another chance, you know, with, with the ball in their hands. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you, you kind of bring up offensive linemen here that they're just getting so much more athletic and they're still standing how big and strong they are. You know, yep. they're, they're just absolute freaks now is what we're seeing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as a linebacker, you always have that kind of – you always have to determine on each play, am I going to go, like, under a block? Am I going to shed a block? Am I going to take yeah. it off in the, in the hole? Kind of yeah. when – how do you get the feel for – when you're going to do that, especially now nowadays when they're not only big and strong, they're also fast and, and quick too. Yeah, here um, on this play, uh, yeah, right there, like right before he came up, I was like, I'm going underneath. Mm-hmm. I thought he had a great angle on me and everything like that. But then I had to determine, you know, that's an outside play and, uh, you know, how else can I use it? So, you know, we use this thing called quick, arm, quick punch and long arm. So I actually did both on that play. I quick punched him and then I long armed him and uh, was able to get get around them, you know. So uh, it's all about creating that separation. And, uh, you know, you you, you kind of determine what you're able to do based on, you know, how the defense is set. So, you know, we had the nickel outside, Kenny outside on this one. Um, you know, he gets sealed. We all kind of get sealed on this play or just about. 
And, uh, you know, again, just they, that was a great scheme. Like you said, the offensive linemen are, you know, jump. You got to make that decision quick. You know, mm-hmm. if you go back side, you got to make it. If you don't, fight to get over the top. And uh, I just happened to fight on this one to get over the top and it just put me in the right position. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, throughout the course of this clip here, you've talked about, you know, your guys' technique against stiff arms, your technique against, uh, you know, breaking blocks and stuff like that. Um, you guys have really worked yep. on a lot of stuff here. Um, how, how much would you say that is on, I, I guess, linebacker coach, I, I'm going to botch his name, uh, Borgonzi. Borgonzi. Name Borgonzi. Yeah. <laughs> how much would you say it's kind of on him? Uh, you know, is, is he the one who's mainly showing you guys this stuff or who, who's kind of working on this stuff with you guys? And, and yeah, him and uh, Coach Eberflus, they do a great job together, um, you know, working on, you know, take different techniques with us and everything like that. Um, you know, our definitely our block shedding and tackling, you know, um, punching the ball and everything like that. And we work on that stuff every day, literally, um, you know, during camp, during mini camp, during uh, OTAs, uh, you know, through week one, through week 17 in the NFL, you know, regular season, we're working on the same drills. And uh, we, you know, we just want to create that, you know, that sense of, you know, just everybody working together for real. You know, we feel that yeah. our our staff does a great job, you know, putting the, putting the best plan for us and, you know, teaching us great detail and technique. Um, and that's what uh, our coaches really focus on. Yeah, and you guys have built a great culture uh, so far with this team for sure. And mm. and you guys are definitely like a tight knit family. It's it's really yep. easy to see just how you guys interact with each other and stuff. But mm-hmm. um, one thing I've been meaning to ask you throughout this too is, you know, you've kind of stepped into that leadership role uh, these last two years. I mean, definitely mm. in the locker room, uh, you know, to fans' point of view, to media, everything, everyone kind of sees you as that locker room presence, that media, that uh, you know, leadership. Uh, type of guy when did you kind of step into that role with this team did you ever kind of feel like that shift like you know I'm a I'm a kind of guy that some of these younger guys are going to look up to or did it just kind of happen yeah I think it like you said just kind of happened you know you don't kind of you don't really like feel it until you know you it just happens you know I just um you know again I'm, I, I take great pride in being um you know a leader by you know showing show and tell you know I, I want to be able to show guys who know what to do you know, and then, um, you know, go out there and show, like, you know, I'm, I'm doing my job and, you know, guys are able to follow from there. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, for my rookie year, I wasn't able to show much on the field. Obviously, you're a rookie. You want to come in and you want to just play ball. Um, my second year, um, I was able to come in at the Mike linebacker spot and kind of just earn my way, you know, through our OTAs and everything like that. Then I get hurt the first week of training camp. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, just sucks the air out of everything. So uh, I had to earn my way then. I had to, you know, show guys, you know, how to how to take that, you know, with a grain of salt too. Let's, like, I had to get that, get my mindset on, okay, I need to go out and still execute, you know, whatever I can do. So whether that's rehab, getting in early, staying late to, you know, make sure I'm getting healthy, um, you know, helping guys off the field. You know, um, I, I was able to get um, – tell a coach to let me get a play script for every practice. So I can help guys with that, you know, teach, show guys, you know, different things that I'm seeing on the, off the field. And then, you know, they can go out there and execute it on the field. And then when I did get my shot, you know, to play linebacker again, I was able to, you know, make some big plays for our team. You know, last year came in uh, and just tried to do the same thing, continue to put my head down and work. And, uh, you know, guys follow the guy, guys like, you know, guys who fought, who, um, you know, who actually display, you know, the work, you know, and I try to go out there every day. And, uh, you know, put my head down at work. And, um, you know, we we created that, you know, we've established that culture of just putting your head down and working every day and just keep getting better. And, uh, you know, I guess, you know, guys just, you know, considered me a leader from there. But, um, yeah, I, I don't go out there with uh, the mindset that uh, I'm the captain. You guys follow me. Nah, I'm more mm-hmm. of a, you know, let, let's do this together. Let's win the right way. Um, I'm going to, you know, obviously help, you know, as much as I can as far as communication on the field you know, anything off the field I can do, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a, you know, I can show you better than I can tell you type thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and honestly, it feels like a lot of you guys are like that on this team. I mean, I've mm-hmm. talked to, to Ben, uh, Ben Banigou, Michael Terry, Kari Willis, uh, Rockison when he was a prospect. I mean, you guys all kind of come off the exact same way, you know, it's, it's, it's never a me first. So I love it with this team. You guys are always very, very team centered. Um, mm-hmm. And it's definitely great to see. And I, and I like too that, you know, you obviously have your first and second round picks and stuff like that on this team, but yeah. it's a lot of guys who were, you know, had to work and earn for all their kind of stuff. You know, like sure. the day, you know, you're a day three guy. Um, you know, Kenny was an undrafted free agent. A lot of you guys yeah. had, had to work for it. Is that kind of, 
I guess it, what, what kind of mentality do you have to have to be kind of like, I guess, like a, a day three pick or undrafted free agent type guy uh, and kind of earn your spot every single practice? Yeah, it's that chip on your shoulder. You know, Kitty talks about it all the time. Um, you know, having that chip on your shoulder, um, you know, never getting complacent. I mean, obviously, they didn't, nobody thought, you know, you would be successful, you know, in this league. You know, I look at my, my uh, draft uh, thing all the time where it says, uh, you know, probably, you know, special teams player, yeah. you know, um, you know, a good backup or something like that. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, for me, that's never been, you know, my mindset. My mindset has always been to be the best at my position and, um, you know, help my team win. And uh, that's that's what I always try to go out and do. Awesome, man. Awesome. And then uh, getting to this last clip here um, before we kind of end this thing off. Uh, yep. The one thing I want to talk about with this is – uh, it's something I've noticed the last two years, you know, a lot of you guys, I, I don't know if it's common run blitz or just a blitz in general, but uh, you guys like to slant the defensive line down a lot. Yeah. And you guys kind of come over the top of linebackers and, and kind of fill yeah. that spot. Um, is that kind of a design run blitz that you guys have in, in your defense? Yeah, we call it patterns, you know, just like offenses run their route patterns and, you know, their run blocking schemes. We call that our run scheme, um, you know, where we, you know, we create we create angles and you know same. We we want to create an advantage just like the offense does. So, um, yeah, we you know we slant the two the D end and the D tackle here, and then the linebacker chases over the top. Awesome man, awesome. Kind of yeah. expecting this play to go outside, but it actually ended up going inside. So I had to readjust, readjust my angle on that one. Yeah, and and you had a lot of success. You know, just making plays on on this type of play here. Um, you know, is, is there kind of a, a timing aspect to it, too? Like, you don't want to crash too early. You don't want to crash too late on, on this type of play. Yeah, so, so we're chasing. You know, we call it chasing. So you want to chase the, the DN's hip here. Uh, you want to be as tight as possible. Um, so that's what I try to do on this one. This one kind of the play kind of botches up a little bit because mm-hmm. they're actually running a trap scheme here instead yeah. of a power scheme. So um, the trap scheme, the ball hits a little tighter. Um, and Ben is still able to redirect the run, obviously by him coming inside that um, Christian McCaffrey has to actually step, take a little bit further step outside than he wants to. And I'm able to make the play right there. Yep. Awesome, man. Awesome. I'm excited for Ben. I think Ben's going to be a Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Ben's going to be great player. for sure. Yeah. He's got a great, great head on his shoulders. Really good personality mm-hmm. too. For sure. Um, but yeah, to, to conclude this here, man. And I, again, I want to say, I appreciate you taking the time to, to share your knowledge with all the Colts fans here and, and really break down from your game. I know, I know that you're a, a definitely a fan favorite with a lot of guys and, and they love watching you out there on, on Sundays, but um, you know, something I want to ask you, and I know it's probably something that you're not thinking about, uh, but you know, you're going into a contract year here. Um, it's, it, I know it's not the thing that's on the top of your mind there, but um, is there any kind of, I guess, expectation or kind of extra stuff that you're that's kind of going into your head you know to going into this contract year you know I have to have a big year before um I hit the free agent market or or the cold extend me or something like that or is it kind of all just business as usual for you yeah for me it's business as usual when you start trying to get caught up in the numbers game and I need to have this or I need to do this you know I always say that when you're on the winning team everything will take care of itself so yeah. um yeah. you know I my goal is for us to win a Super Bowl this year that's my number one goal um, I want to help the team do that in any way possible, shape, or form. So, um, you know, that's my goal right now. I want to help us win the Super Bowl. So, um, and everything else to take care of itself. You know, you go out there, you put your head down, you work hard, you do what you do. Um, you know, guys are noticed, and you know, whether it's here in India or whatever it is, you know, I, I, I'm sure everything else will take care of itself. I love to c- continue playing in India. I love the culture that's created here. I love the coaches. I love the players and everything like that. So. Um, we'll worry about that when it happens and when it comes. But right now, yeah, our goal is to win a Super Bowl. And, you know, that's my goal right now. Awesome, man. Awesome. And uh, one other question I want to ask you before we kind of conclude this off here is, um, you know, I kind of asked uh, – who asked? I think it was Matthew Adams. I, so I did talk to another linebacker, actually. I talked to Matthew Adams a couple of weeks mm-hmm. ago. Um, and I asked him who he thinks could be the breakout star on this defense, some, one of the younger guys. And he – I think he said Grover Stewart is, was his guy. Um, but I want to ask you, as someone who's, you know, the Mike linebacker who's around this defense, of all these young yeah. guys, of, of all these young guys on this team, all these really promising young kids, who do you think is going to be a, a big breakout star this year? Oh, that's a tough one. I mean, we have a lot of guys. But um, if I had to pick one, um, you know, that I'm really excited for, I'd say Kari Willis. I think, um, mm-hmm. you know, his story is very special. Um, yeah. You know, everything that he endured last season and still was able to put a productive season together. Uh, especially as a rookie, man, that was tough for him. And I know he, you know, again, you know, he's a he's a warrior. He he 
he lives, you know, football and everything like that. But he's a true definition of a warrior. So I'm excited for him this year. I mean, he's he he. I mean, obviously he went through a couple, you know, um, you know, growing moments last year, learning moments. But he yeah. played really well last year. So I'm excited to see that year two jump for him. Um, and that's a lot of guys. I like Grover Stewart, like um, Matt said. Uh, Bobby could have another, you know, a, a, take a, a great, you know, another step in the right direction. Um, Rock the sin, all those guys. But I'm really, really excited for Kari. Awesome, man. Awesome. One final question here before I let you go. And again, I, I want to appreciate you sharing your knowledge here. It's been really insightful stuff. And, and I'm sure, again, Colts fans are going to love hearing from you. But um, the Colts made a ton of big additions on this defense. You know, DeForest mm-hmm. Buckner, Xavier Rhodes, uh, Julian Blackman's going to come in, uh, you know, rookie. Uh, so you guys, it's, it's really looking up to go on this next season here. Mm-hmm. Uh, what can we kind of expect from this, uh, this defense going forward uh, with you and Darius leading the way and, and all this talent coming in? Yeah, um, you know, again, we won't put any notions out there, any, you know, no, uh, no bullets and borrowed material. I say. I've been trying, uh, man. Gonna, I've been trying. I yeah. threw it out there for Ben and Kamoko too, and nothing. Yeah, nothing. yeah. No material board. Uh, no material uh, board stuff over here. We're going to go out and we're going to work hard each day. You know, when we are, when we're able to step on the field together, and uh, we want to put, we want to be able to put display. You know, what our hard work on the field every day. So, um, that's our goal right now. Put our head down, keep working off season workouts right now, and then when we get together. Let's build this chemistry, get the camaraderie back going and everything like that, and then go out on Sundays and execute. Awesome, man. Well, like, great stuff there. And, again, I really appreciate you joining. And, uh, you know, just stay safe with everything going on right now. It's uh, crazy times out here in the world. So just stay safe out there, bud. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right now. All right, you have a good one, bud. You too.